Now that we're done the vice, we can start to look at it and see we have a couple errors with it that would make it not physically possible to make. So first off, there's the screw here. is isn't actually have any thread to it. There's no way for it to tie in or move in this. So we're not only going to use the thread tool to actually thread that, but we're going to make some threads ourselves and see how that one works. Secondly, if I were to make each and it, every one of these individual parts, this screw has no physical way of fitting into the base because I have a large part here, a large part over here, and a skinny part and a skinny hole. So there's no physical way for me to get this screw into the base. So we have to do a couple edits to make that possible. Also on the front, most of the time when you make a base, you have a plate here and a plate here. And those are sacrificial plates, meaning that we can like drill into them, we can mark them up, and then we can replace those easily um, if we have any damage or anything. And we don't have to replace the entire vise if we do anything. So we're going to make a set of those to go in there. So it's a little bit more realistic. Then also back here, if I were to pull this out, we can see that our keys actually cut into our base. That's not physically possible either, so we have to edit that. And then lastly, if I were to put these handle knobs on the handle rod, there's no way for those handle knobs to stay on the rod. They would just fall right off. So we got to do something about that as well. Once we're all done these edits, our vice is going to look something like this. So you can see I have a screw that I made on here and in here. So it actually goes in and out like it should. Um, I have these little things for what's called set screws to keep those on there. I have these plates with screws on them. Also, my screw goes all the way through and gets secured over here with something else. My keys can no longer fall out because I have a set screw in there to hold them in place. And then lastly, it actually fits. So this is what our final product is going to look like, and we're going to take a couple steps to get here. We're going to start off with the easiest one, which is making those keys fit in the back. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to make my key larger, so it actually comes into my jaw more, um, so that I can clamp down on it. And then I'm also going to make my base larger as well. So we're going to start with making the base larger. And to do that, I need to know how big I need it to do to be. And we, so we need to measure from this side to this side. And to do that, I can go to the Inspect tab he, up here in my ribbon and click on Distance and go from one end to the other and see that my distance needs to be 1.625 inches long. All right, so let's edit our base. I'm going to edit it by just double-clicking on it. And you can see everything else is kind of uh, translucent, and my base is solid, which means I'm working only on that. I need to pick my extrusion in my browser that dealt with that cutout, which was extrusion, what was it, 3. And I don't want to edit the actual extrusion. I want to edit the sketch, so I'm going to click the little plus and double-click on the sketch. I have a couple dimensions here. And the one I care about is this bottom one, which goes from one side to the other. And I just need to change that to 1.625 inches. Click Finish Sketch, and it'll automatically make it larger. And there we go. So that part's done, so I can click Return. And now I need to make my keys larger and have them go into my jaw a little bit further so I can actually lock them down. I'm going to drill holes in the bottom of my jaw and use what's called set screws to lock those in there. So let's make our key larger first. I'm going to just double click on one to edit it. And then I have my extrusion. And it looks like I just drew the side of it and extruded it outwards. So I'm going to edit my extrusion this time. I'm going to make it 0 0.5. That's quite a bit larger. Click OK. 
and click return. Now it pushes it back into our jaw or into our body base, but I'm now going to make my jaw smaller as well so that they come back in. So I'm going to edit my jaw by double clicking on it. Find my extrusion that dealt with those slots, which was one, and double click on the sketch for that. Now, if I were to do, I need to now know how far to go in. So originally I had it 0.1875, and I added, what was it? I went from 0.5 to 0.375. So I did 0.5 minus 0.375. I added one eighth of an inch to my, my keys, so I just need to add one eighth of an inch to this. So I can just go to the end of it and do plus 0.125, and I'll add it. And now it's 0.3125. So that's the same side, or the right side, I mean. Oh, I forgot to type in a plus sign there. And when I finish the sketch, It'll make them larger. And if I click return, it'll suck them back in there because I have that constraint holding my key to that back surface. So now we need to drill holes in the bottom. So I'm going to go back and edit my jaw and create a sketch on the bottom. You just do two points anywhere kind of in the middle ish. And I'm going to use a horizontal constraint to go to make sure they stay in line with each other. And then I'm going to use a horizontal constraint to make sure they stay on the middle as well. So now they're on the middle of my bottom. I then just need to dimension how far over they are. So they're going to be 0.125 inches. We're essentially going to go into the middle-ish of the key. I'm actually going to change it to 0.1875 so it's a little bit more in the jaw. And to edit this one, I can just double click on it and do 0.1875. And then we got to do some holes. So I'm going to just click the hole tool. And we're going to use a tapped hole. It needs to be threaded. And we're going to change our size to a number, let's do a number three uh, screw. So a fairly small screw we're dealing with here. And then we're going to, I want the thread to be the whole depth of the hole, so I'm going to click full depth here. And then I just need to change this distance. Instead of that, I can just click 2 and select that surface. And it'll make a hole all the way through 2 then. Oh, and it doesn't like that for some reason. So instead of doing 2, let's do a distance. And just do 0.5. No, oh, bigger than that. I don't care how long it is, as long as it goes through there, but not through the top. So it's a little bit smaller than that. So let's try 0.875. There we go. That works perfectly. So I'm going to click OK then. And we have a hole going all the way through. So click Return. And now I have those holes. Now Inventor has a great thing in that I want to put a set screw in there. and if you don't know what a set screw is, if I go to a website called McMaster.com, this is a fairly useful resource for hardware and industrial parts. I could just type in set screw so you can see what it is. And it even tells me a little bit about set screws, so I could read these and see exactly what it is. Set screw is essentially a bolt without the head on it. Um, instead of a head, there's like a little hex or a slotted, like a slot screwdriver on the end of it. And it allows you to essentially tighten something into something else. So I can use, a standard is like a cup type of set screw. And this just screws in through that hole to hold anything in place. Now we really want that key to stay in um, really, really well. So we're going to use a cone type of set screw which, if you read it, it says a sharp tip wedges into the contact area for the highest holding power of all set screw styles. That's exactly what we want. We never really have to move this, so um, this would be, a cone would be a fairly useful one. Now to get there, where we usually have a place, I'm going to click the drop down and click place from content center. 
and that loads Inventor's directory, essentially, of all their different things. So they have, for instance, cables, types, they have fasteners, they have shaft parts, sheet metal, they have all kinds of things in here. You go to a set screw, which is in fasteners, bolts, and a whole bunch of different options here, including set screws. And then I'm left with a whole lot of options. I'm going to scroll down quite some ways. Where is it? Until I get to these types of set screws. And then I want a hexagonal set screw, not a spline one. I just got to find a point type of set screw. And we're getting into kinds we don't really want. So I'm going to go with just a standard set screw then. Um, let's just use a type A then. I can't find the points. If I wanted to, I could really look and find them. Like, here's one. We can see a little picture of it. But I'm not sure what that code means. I could look it up, and if I were properly doing this for manufacturing, I would. But for our purposes, we can just go to a type A hexagonal set screw and double click on it. Now we're left with a huge set screw, but if I go and I click on a hole, Inventor will automatically size it to that hole. So I can just click there, and if it sees another hole in the same area of it, it will assume that you're putting in the same kind of fastener for both of those. Then I can change its depth if I want to by clicking and dragging on this but the stock depth of it was fine and then I can just click the check mark here and Inventor will automatically make for me two screws and I could even go and edit these I could right click on them open them and you can see it makes them just like you would make a part almost that's pretty cool all right now that we're done this our keys are now in there. They're set screwed in so they won't fall out if I go too far with it. And they actually don't cut through the base. So, so far, so good. Um, and this is a good resting point, so let's check our mass. And your mass, after doing all that, should now be 17.074 pounds. So, once you have that, you can move on to the next video then. Let's save it though, and there we go.